Wonderful. Okay, so we are recording. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining us for our Gogi Power Up meeting. It is the week of July 1st, and that means... Second. Well, but it's the week of July oh, 1st, Mary. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so, um, we're going to go ahead and we'll get started. And let me just make sure everybody can see my screen. If you can't, please give out a shout. And um, <clears throat> uh, let's see. Carolyn, you can see my screen, right? Yes, I can. Thank you. Would you like, uh, um, would you like to call the meeting to order by reading this part right here? Okay. Uh, we call this meeting to order. The purpose of GOGI is to provide simple tools to anyone interested in making more positive decisions in their lives. The goal of the Power Up is to create a purpose and meaning of service for that week. That is where GOGI gets their power. We power up by living a life of service. Oh, thank you. I think I have a test question for, for tomorrow out of that. Okay, cool. Um, okay, and who would like to read our Gogi tools? Sorry, I'll read them. Okay. <clears throat> uh, the Gogi tools for positive decision making are boss of my brain, badly breathing, five second light switch, positive thoughts, positive words, positive actions, claim responsibility, let go, forgive, what if, reality check, ultimate freedom. Perfect, thank you very much. So we'll now do a quick um, recap of the prior week's tool. Um, the prior week's tool was what? What was last week's tool? Ultimate freedom. Ultimate freedom. Thank you. And what were some of the key points that you guys remember about ultimate freedom? You have to be free. So, they, so we learned that the key words for ultimate freedom were being free is up to me. Being of service sets me free, sets me internally free. Right. Living a life of service gives me ultimate freedom. Thank you. So <clears throat> how, how does ultimate freedom apply to somebody who's incarcerated? Because you they can have, have the freedom power. Sorry. It's no, go ahead. Huh? They have to free themselves of their past, present, and just be free and able to accept their new way of life, I guess. Okay. They also, even though they're incarcerated, typically not free, they can be free of their internal prison that they put themselves in from any other kind of negative feelings. Okay. So this is not a physical freedom, it's a mental freedom, correct? And emotional, okay. yes. Yeah. So this is something that isn't, isn't going to be physical. So even though somebody might be physically, physically imprisoned, <clears throat> the one thing that can't be taken away from them is their thoughts their decision making, their reasoning abilities. So with ultimate freedom, they're able to be free even though they might be in prison. And um and I didn't I remember talking about this last week and, and I never I never uploaded that one video. I need to remember to do that. It's uploaded but I think it's way down in the pile but there was um there was somebody from I can't remember what I, I can't remember where was it I can't remember which prison, but anyway, so he got up and he was speaking in front of a, a big group of the guys. I think it was graduation for, for Gogi at one of the prisons. And um, he basically said that there are, there are men inside. There are, there are men that are in physical prisons 
and actually have more freedom than the majority of us out here as free people. And that's because we form our own mental prisons. We walk around, a lot of people out here will walk around in their own, their own prison, which is a mental prison, because they don't have yeah. the freedom that a lot of the guys inside that do gogi have. Um, and that's why these guys are able to be happy and live a, a gogi way of life is because they know no matter what's done to them, their thoughts are their own. Their decisions are their own. Their reactions, the actions, the reactions are their own. And that gives them hope um, for the future. So most of us out here have our own forms of prisons. And that's something that Gogi can, that's why, want, that's why Gogi can help all of us. So I need to remember to, Monica, you're in charge of reminding me to find that because I love that. It was like one of the first videos I saw and it gave me chills. So I'll find that. Okay. <clears throat> Anybody, any other thoughts on ultimate freedom? Okay. So, um, Monica, you want to read the Gogi National Calendar for this week, please? Okay. This weekly study, oh, this week's all the Gogi people in the world are studying boss of my brain. Boss of my brain, B O M B. I right. am the bomb. Just like my hands. We, we need to get our hands on some of those hats. I have a hat. Did you guys, somebody get a hat? I didn't get a hat. I bought I a, hat. Got a hat. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, those are good. It is what the experience, no matter where I live, I choose to be. Oh, yeah, yeah. Something else that it said in the How to Gogi book, under it said under ultimate freedom. I understand that ultimate freedom is what I experience no matter where I live, when I choose to be of service to others. So no matter where we are, because that's the key, is being of service to others. That's what gives us the freedom. And a lot of people have an issue with the whole being of service to others, but that's, that's exactly what Gogi and the Power Up is all about. All right, so let's go ahead and I'm going to now jump over to our, first I want to just let's, I wanted to remind her, I, I threw this up on the, in the group, in the file folder, but this is the weekly assessment tool I actually found in the How to Gogi book. I thought it would be good for us to use um, because it's daily, it's the kind of our daily reminder and so I already put this one up each week I'll change the, the tool name and the statement of ownership and our three part our, um, our keywords but so today I put up day one the question is do I see this week's tool in action around me so you guys can like download your own copy or maybe just write down your answers feel free to share them with the group but even if you just do it on your own it keeps the tool in front of us and, and it helps us, you know, work through it and to maybe acknowledge what we see, acknowledge what could be changed a little bit better, but just go down each day. So that's today. Do I see this week's tool in action around me? I have All a right. question about that. Yeah. Um, can we can we edit that on Microsoft Word to type in it or no? Absolutely. I can actually make this, I can make this um, editable. I can make it PDF editable. Um, I can, I can also, I have it in Word. I have it in Word form. Okay. But it okay. would probably be, I, it would probably be easier if I just, if I make it PDF editable, then even when you open it on, in the group, I think it will still be editable, but I can email an edited, an editable version to everybody. So you can kind of just cool. keep it on your computer or whatever you want to do. Yeah, that would be I cool. would highly suggest sending, sending, making copies and sending these out to our men also so that they can maybe use it. Or maybe one master, just a blank one, and then they can use a scrap of paper or whatever. It might help them as well. But, yeah, I can easily yeah. make this edit. Okay, thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Okay, so here is our tool chapter for the week, Boss of My Brain. I'll go ahead and read the statement of ownership is, I am boss of my brain and I have complete control over each thought I create. 
Because I am boss of my brain, I can change my thoughts at any time. No one has control over my thoughts because only I am the boss of my brain. This is such a good tool for kids. This has like, got to be one of the easiest things, one of the first things we could probably teach our children, is that they can control their thoughts, their actions, and their reactions. Um, I tried teaching this to my granddaughter, Haven. She liked the fact that she was a boss. <laughs> I mean, she liked, she liked the fact that she got to, you know, boss something around, it, you know, it would have needed a little bit more practice, but she, she enjoyed telling everybody she was the boss of her brain. She needed to be the boss of her mouth <laughs> a lot of the time. We're still working on that one. Okay. So we want to repeat this week's statement of ownership as often as possible before you get out of bed, before your meals, during a break, and before sleeping. Write this statement for added emphasis. Your weekly statement of ownership reinforces this week's tool. And I should put a little snippet or add a little something. Um, we have the GoBee flashcards. We can do um, um, stickies on our fridges, on our mirrors that give us what on our alarm week is. Yeah, um, on the car, dash of our car. Um, there's a lot of different ways to remind us, setting, yeah, setting alarms, different ways to remind us to repeat our statement of ownership. Um, so those are some of the items we can use. Um, Carmi, are you able to read us the week's study, Boss of My Brain? Um, yeah, sure. Um, are you able to hear me? Yes, yeah, I can hear you. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, weeks to study Boss of My Brain are the first week of January, the first week of April, the first week of July, first week of October. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. And um, Rebecca, I want to let, what are the keywords for Boss of My Brain? Uh, the three parts. There are three parts that matter. Smart part emotional part and old habit part which one is the boss right now okay so those are the three parts of our brain when it when it comes to gogi um smart emotional and old part and i think where is that picture there's a brain picture i'm not sure if, hmm. if i was able to keep that in here or not since i'm having to like condense everything down for the new book but um we'll learn about those three parts as we go along. All right, so um, Sabina, do you want to tell us what our objective for Boss of My Brain is? Sure. Um, your goal with this week's tool is to learn that you have a choice in how your brain thinks. You can smart think, emotional think, or you can old habit think. You are the boss of how you think, and you will and you will learn how to be the boss with this week's tool called boss of my brain thank you and i'm going to edit this really quick before monica the grammar nazi jumps all over me because i see i've got an extra space oh i don't have an extra space <laughs> why is it set up like that it looks like it though it does look like it there must, there must be some kind of formatting same with this one I'm sorry, I'm, this is gonna freak me out if I don't figure out how to fix it, sorry. And then Monica will send me some kind of message or something afterwards. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, is, oh, come on. All right, sorry, we're getting, we're getting detracted, distracted here. But I need <laughs> then make sure to save it again. <laughs> I'm seriously, I'm like Monk on that TV show, Monk. It's like, okay, these are... <sighs> <laughs> There's another Ew. one. I know. <laughs> that one too. That's weird. How, oh, how now I messed up holding up. And I'm moving stuff. <sighs> Is that it? That's it. That's it. Okay. Let me get out of this. Back. All right. Scroll back up here. Boom. Okay. Sweet. All right. So. Way we do this. So, oh no, we didn't. Uh, well, there we are. Okay. All right. Yay. Joanne, do you want to read um, the tool intro for Boss of My Brain? Sure. 
Um, did you know that Gogi believes that there are only three parts of your brain you need to understand? At Gogi, at Gogi, we focus on three parts of your brain. The three parts, the smart part, the emotional part, the old habit part. Thank you. Sorry, guys. I My see that too so over there. I know, I know, I know. Look at two. <laughs> Not me. I know a lot. A lot. You need to understand. Okay, now there's like, okay, now. Shut up, Monica. Oh. That's fine. All right. Okay. Yes, you must. Let's just leave it like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so definitely need to have people like, you know, reading this. And I'm going to put a space in there because that's not right. Okay. So we have the smart part, the emotional part, and the old habit part. Okay. So how to use boss of my brain. Who would like to read that for us? I will. Okay. Okay. How to use Boss of My Brain. If you want to use the Gogi tool called Boss of My Brain, all you need to do is ask yourself, what part of my brain is in charge right now? It's that simple. The smart part of your brain is where you learn new things. This is the part of the brain that will help you be strong and make positive decisions. The emotional part is filled with opinions, drama, anger, or hurt. When you let this part of your brain be the boss, you are not going to make positive decisions. The old habit part of your brain is where all those old habits you no longer need are stored. The less you rely on old habits, the more room you will have for the smart part to keep you, cre keep you, to okay. help you create new positive habits. Perfect. Okay, why don't you go ahead? Why don't you go ahead and just finish reading this page? All right. Um, review, boss of my brain. All you do is ask, what part of my brain is working right now? Am I using my smart part, emotional part, or old habit part? If you ask yourself this question, then you are using the Gogi tool, boss of my brain. If you use no other tool. Boss of my brain is enough for you to be the boss of your life and make the changes that will allow you to enjoy each day a little more. Some students find it easy to be the boss when they touch their forehead to remind themselves to be smart thinking. Okay. You want me to keep reading? Yeah. Yep. From Coach Taylor, Boss of My Brain. When I was explaining how the brain worked to a group of prisoners, one guy spoke up and said, what are you telling us, coach? Is that, is that I can be the boss of my brain? That was how this tool got its name. Every one of the Gogi tools was developed by men and women who had struggled many years and had made decisions which hurt them and others. In listening to them, it was easy to see they wanted to make the choices leading to a positive life. They just didn't have the tools. In developing the tools, they discovered they could change and make that change last. After more than a decade of working with men and women and children in prisons or trapped inside a prison of their own mind, I have come to realize that the Gogi tool, Boss of My Brain, can unlock even the most stubborn of prison doors. When all of life's events are altered through this tool, any individual, and I do mean any individual, has the power to control and direct their reactions and responses. Life might not be fair, but Boss of My Brain sure puts you in the driver's seat. Love, Coach. Okay, <clears throat> this is a long page, isn't it? Okay, I'll go ahead and read thoughts from Coach Lee Carlson. Coach Lee Carlson was appointed as Gogi's National Director of Programs and Media in 2013 after four years of nearly full-time volunteerism for Gogi. In her current volunteer position, she is responsible for coordinating with institutions 
of corrections as they implement GOGI into their programming. In each chapter, she will provide insights and her perspective into maximizing the GOGI tools for positive decision making. I am, okay, this is, I need to go back and reformat this stuff. I am boss of my brain. Say that to yourself. I am boss of my brain. A powerful realization for me in my life was how I relate to my brain and how I choose to process thoughts and information is 100% up to me. When I first realized that I am boss of my brain, it immediately gave me a positive sense of self-control and confidence. I had been lacking my entire life. I always thought others made me think, feel, speak, and act a certain way. They made me do it. They made me feel this way. No one made me feel or do anything. I am in control. I can choose to think a specific thought or feel a certain way, regardless of others' opinions or actions. This simple yet powerful fact propelled me into a life where my decisions are filtered through a powerful brain capable of handling even the most difficult situations. Going inside prisons and jails, you meet a lot of people who do not think they are in control. They have given their control over because they are physically incarcerated. They are in prison physically and mentally. What Boss of My Brain says is that you can be locked up you can be told what to do, where to stand, when to sleep, and when to eat, but you cannot ever be told what to think while doing so. Your thoughts and how you choose to view a situation is entirely up to you. You choose. You are the boss. No one else dictates how you think, feel, or act. That's all you. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna post this. This is this is like the key right here. These these two paragraphs I think is kind of the key to like everything as far as the tools. Yep. I love it, Carlson. Um, okay, and I'm gonna find I'm gonna fix that typo. All right, so boss of my brain in action. It was a Wednesday evening at Men's Central Jail in Los Angeles where there was a weekly go group being held. One of the group's facilitators was running late, having just returned from court. When he arrived, he joined the group, sitting quietly and listening to his peers share about their use of that week's tool. When it was the facilitator's turn to share his thoughts, he informed the man that his trial had ended that afternoon. The defense and prosecution had offered their closing statements that day. He said, I heard things said about me today that I have never heard. They said things about me that I cannot repeat. The things they called me, the type of man they told the jury and the court that I am, it was incredibly difficult to hear those things about myself. He cleared his throat, choked up a bit, and sat up straight in his chair and said, I am telling you guys, if I didn't have good and did not know that I am the boss of my brain, I would not have been able to take that. I could not have heard those things and not wanted to react with my emotional part and old habit part, but... I sat there. I remembered I am boss of my brain. I know better. I am better today. I can do better today. I am not what they say I am. I know who I am today. Simply, boss of my brain gave this Gogi student his power. He was in control of how he chose to process information and opinions and how he chose to perceive the world around him, regardless of the negative thoughts or feelings towards him. Gogi for life, Coach Carlson. That would be wicked hard for anybody to have to sit through and listen. So mm -hmm. that definitely that definitely helped him. Okay, so we have action with the tool, boss of my brain. Now, action with the tool. This is the, what we added in. This is the new way of looking at the power it means this action with the tool is not something that it, the guys do currently um this is something that's going to be part of the power up but what i want to do really quick is flip back over and um i think we kind of looked at some of the activities that's what the guys do it's called activities um with the tool so let me just look at the gogi teach me how to gogi book really quick and let's find let's find what there's okay so the this is from the actual teach me how to 
Yeah, page 49. Page 49, thank you. So just so you know what we're doing, this small Teach Me How to Googie book that everybody studies, it's a five by seven book. Um, basically, what Coach asked me to do was take this book that I don't know how many, it's a bunch of pages, and basically take as much information as I can and make it into a 30 page, eight and a half by 11 booklet that will be used out here for the meetings. I will tell you right now, it is very difficult to do. I've had to pull out a bunch of stuff, and I don't think we're, we're going to have to do more than, oh, look, there's Coach Carlson. We're going to have to do more than um, more than 30 pages. There's the group questions. Oh, sorry, I passed it. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Okay, so here's the activity, and I, I, like, I like this. This is, I'm going to start, I don't think I'm going to pull the activities out. Coach, Coach thought we might not need them in groups, especially because we're in a conference call type thing, but we're not going to be in conference call type thing um, forever. So we're going to have actual groups, and we can still even use this. So alone with another, alone with another person or in small groups, you can enjoy this activity, okay? So let's go ahead and do this. So forehead, please touch your forehead, okay? Everybody touch your forehead. I can see you. <laughs> Please touch your forehead. Right behind your forehead is the smart part of your brain. Give an example to your partner or group of when you make smart decisions and when you are using smart part thinking. Okay? All right. So, first of all, where is the smart part of our brain? Right behind, behind your forehead. forehead. Right. So, right behind our forehead, okay? So when anybody, um, when do we use a smart part of our brain? When do we make smart decisions? Hopefully all the time. Oh my God, Monica. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a gonna say... statement. <laughs> I was going to say okay. probably 85 to 90% of the day. Right. We would make smart decisions. We would make the, and God bless you people, because I swear it's a whole lot less for me if I think about it. But so, so you would, you would then could think that the majority of the day, your smart part of your brain is what's functioning. When you're driving, you know, you're getting up, you're getting ready for work, whatever it is that we're doing, right? We, we make smart decisions. Okay. So then now touch your ears. Between your two ears, in the middle of your head, is the emotional part of your brain. Give an example to your partner or group of when you make emotional decisions and are letting the emotional part be the boss. See, this one's much easier I, for me. <laughs> I, used, I used to all the time. I don't anymore, I don't think. I mean, I get, I get mad a lot faster than I used to, and I used to not... Like, I used to care what everybody thought about me, but lately, I could give to about any any of that. I, I, I personally, I don't feel like maybe I do use my emotional part more than I think I do. I don't know. I can tell you when my emotional part comes up when, um, during work, my emotional part comes up during work when... I get an email or I feel that people aren't um, acting fair. I have this, uh, I, my personality is that everything should be fair. Mm -hmm. Everybody should treat people fairly. Everybody, if somebody isn't being, at, it doesn't act fair, that, that should be, there should be a punishment for that. I mean, I, I, I'm just, I, everything to me is about things being fair. And when I see people, Treating somebody that's not fairly or acting in a certain way, my emotional part comes up a lot. And I... It's so a you time out? Huh? I said, should they have go, go to time out? I, I, they should go, go somewhere. To <laughs> <laughs> they, and it's, it's very difficult. And it's a good thing I work from home. Because I can sit in front of my computer and I can talk to my computer as if it's them. And I can write an email and I can reach type it 10 times before I hit the send button, which I taught myself to do. Because I used to hit the send button like immediately and got myself in trouble. 
<laughs> so yeah, so I function on emotion. It's a family trait. I definitely, definitely working on that. But as I get older, it's gotten better because I'm just tired and old and don't give as much of a crap anymore as I used to. But it's still there. I, Anybody I, else? I, I have a question. Does the emotional part always have to be negative, or can it be positive emotion? I think it can be positive emotions. I think in this context, um, when when the book, when this tool was written, it was more set out for um, the guys in having the negative emotions, oh, okay. um, anger and violence and negative thinking. So yeah, it can definitely be uh, positive, but I think as far as the tool is concerned, they're more focusing on the emotional part because that has a tendency to be what we don't really want to use. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> I was thinking of, of it in a whole different way, I think. <laughs> well, I think if we can think of it in a whole different way, that would be much better, wouldn't it? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I mean if, we could, I, if we could think emotionally and trade uh, the bad emotions for good emotions. It's like today then... we, went to, we went to lunch at a, a open area in Lake Arrowhead and I don't know, sometimes I think people in Lake Arrowhead think they're hotsy totsy or something. And there was a child there that was kind of causing a bit of a commotion. And I was noticing people at the other tables were getting pretty irritated about it. And I just started talking to the child and then the child got down from theirs and came over and sat at our table and was perfectly fine. <laughs> and wow. Well, well, the emotional children act, children act in a certain way because of who they're dealing with. Yeah, That's and true. the dad, when they, when they left, the dad came over and he said, thank you so much, I can't believe. He never goes to strangers, and and you calmed him down. And I said, well, I was just thinking about my own great grandson is about the age of your child, and I don't know. So that that's what came up to me when we were talking about the emotional part of the brain. I wasn't thinking so much about the negative, but I understand what you're saying with the gentlemen who are doing yeah. this side. It's probably more negative. Okay, thank you. <laughs> No, but you using that, that emotional, that positive emotional part of your brain also causes you to use the smart part, right? Mm -hmm. So that all kind of ties in together with that. But no, thank you for sharing that. Children are extremely, they understand. They see what's around them. They get it a lot more yeah. than we get. So yeah. a lot of times their reactions are very clearly in response to, to their situation at the time. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for that. So now the back of the head. So everybody touch the back of your head. Okay, okay. so we put our hand on the back of our head. That is where the old habit thinking happens. Give an example of some old habit thinking which has controlled you in the past. Hmm. We all probably have these. Yeah, you get upset and you just go and eat. There you go. Habit to go Grab something and put something, you know, nice and carbohydrate-y in your mouth. Right. Excellent. Right. Or, or like, okay. I, or have a drink or something or, that. Yeah. Right. Or don't drink water, but drink Diet Coke instead. That's old habit. <laughs> <laughs> that all the time. So. So I have I I have something really good that I've changed from my past. I used to be like very assertive and always yell at my oldest daughter when she was younger. And I've changed that from knowing how it affected her now as an eighteen year old and I, I changed it and I'm not so assertive and aggressive with Liliana at her young age. So I've completely like redone my parenting skills because I know how it worked with my oldest and not to do it with my youngest. Yeah. These poor, the, the oldest, oldest children, I can attest I am oh one. They are, they are the trial children, okay? <laughs> you know, my it's parents so you know, bad, like, screw, though. Up, screw up with the first one, figure it out, and then, and then you're better for, for all the rest of them, right? So it, it is, I was like that with my oldest um, and my parents were like that with me 
but you know what? You, we all do the we all do the best we can, and at least we learn, right? We we might send our oldest into you know counseling and stuff, but you know that's okay. They'll figure they'll figure it out. <laughs> but yeah, I I think that's good. That you're much calmer. You're much calmer, Rebecca, in a short period of time we've known you than you were when you first started to. You seem yeah. more I'm trying. Centered. So more what? Centered. Oh, okay. I'm not trying to get I'm not trying to get all juju or, you know, you know, anything. <laughs> um, but you, you, yeah. want, you seem a little more centered. So that's that's sober. good. That's all you seem more sober, oh, Rebecca. Thank you. <laughs> so, did you say sober? Monica. Okay. All right. So that is crazy. I don't, but I don't drink. I don't do any of that. I, the only thing I have is diet coke. And, I know. I know you are, Monica. Um, yeah. I don't know. The only bad habit I have is cigarettes. Like that's my my clutch. I guess. Yeah, we're we're gonna beat that out of you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. All right. So one thing that I know that I fall, the old habit that I fall into a lot is, um, and it totally took me back yesterday. Yesterday, I had some, I had a guy, he's, he's fortunate he was still a man after he said this to me, because I was like, bad old habit thinking. But he made the comment, you have such a pretty face. You really oh. should take better care of your body. <laughs> right. Sorry. And who, and who of us have not probably, you know, at some time or another heard that whole thing? And I, it, it oh, immediately, no. immediately put me into an era of my life where that was something I heard a lot and I allowed to affect me. So my old habit came up immediately, which brought my emotional part up because I was so angry that I allowed what this guy said to me to put me back in that place. And it, it was, it surprised me because I hadn't had anybody say that to me in a very long time. And, but fortunately I'm now at an age where I just, I, you know, I was instantly mad, but I just laughed at him. I, I just laughed. And I, I, you know, I was like, you need to look in a mirror. You are toe up from the flow up. I mean, why <laughs> people say stuff like that? First of all, it's I would have cut him out. No, and I did it. I did it. Now what I do is I point, mock, and laugh at people. <laughs> Comments like, you know, I don't know why, but I'm still working. That. But that is an example of sometimes things being triggered that puts you into old habit thinking, and it can be really destructive. I was so, in the emotional part. I was in the emotional part. Yeah. yeah. So you know, just it kind of brought up the way. Yeah, that was emotional too, wasn't it? Yes. I guess the old habit part is if I would have like punched him in the face or something. Cause <laughs> right. If that's what you used to do, then that's old habit. But the emotional part is where you wanted to strike out because you were hurt. You're right. So what it did was it brought up old feelings. Maybe that's where I complicated old feelings yeah. with old habit. Yeah, no, I would have punched him back in the day. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't as graceful as I am now. Yeah. All right. Does anybody have any more comments on that activity? Oh, wait, no, we didn't. We're not done. We're not done. Review. After everyone in your group has completed this activity, you can have each member. Oh, I don't think we can do We can't see each other. But have each member touch their forehead. Oh, yeah, no, we can do this. Touch their forehead and state one thing they will do every day this week, which is using the smart part for smart thinking. Okay. Um, Dondria, are you there? I'm just writing down my alpha, my list alphabetically here. Do you want to touch your forehead and tell us one thing you're going to do using the smart part this week? Don't pass right now. Come back to me. Okay. You're going to pass? Yeah. Come back okay. to me. Okay. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Okay. Um, instead of running down the list, who wants to tell, who wants to give us one? Zach. I'm here. So one thing, go ahead. One thing we'll do this week, each, this, each day this week, which is using the smart part. Go ahead. I will think before I speak. Thank you. Very good. 
I will try to remember that lots of people don't understand that dogs have a hard time on 4th of July and try to control my urge to call the police on them for doing illegal fireworks. And I'll put it for you. <laughs> yeah, do, I, I, well, my dog that was really terrible, that was so, had so much anxiety over it, she just, she passed away. So this will be my first 4th of July without her. But oh. I'm not sure how my other dog is going to react because he would kind of feed off of her and and I, I think. Um, so we'll see if he can make it through without me having to tranquilize him, which I always hated to do because, you know, it was a two day ordeal for them to get through that. And yeah. oh, 4th of July oh. became like one of the worst holidays in, in my life for met for 13 years. Wow. So, you know, because of my animals. So I'm going to try to, um, I'm, I'm going to be positive and feel good so that hopefully he doesn't feed off of any negative energy. I'm not going to give him any negative energy so that he doesn't freak out. And hopefully we will have a smooth sailing day and evening. All right. Thank you. Well, anybody else? Who's next? Um, I will touch my forehead and say that I'm going to continue to do what I try to do on a daily basis, and that is to try not to have gut reactions to things, but to try to be false in my brain and do a five-second light switch or belly breathing so that before I actually react to anything. <clears throat> Okay. Anybody else? I'll go. This is Sabina. Um, I'm. I would like to be able to catch myself um, and have positive thoughts if I feel that I'm going in a wrong direction, thinking wise. If if I start thinking negatively, I'd like to. Uh, I'd like to turn that around, be able to catch it right away and turn it around. And I'd like to use the smart part of my brain. Awesome. Thank you. I'm Joanne. Um, I will use the smart part of my brain when um, hearing all the negativity at work coming from all the other employees um, okay. to try to stay centered and be um, open minded about the whole situation versus just as one employee that everybody is um, uh, talking about. So I would uh, trying to be a little, uh, trying to be more of, um, of, a, of a leader versus um, letting her, the, the negative or toxic person in, in the group uh, Thinky, she's won the game, so I, I basically stay focused. Okay. Thank you. That can definitely be hard. Ow. I hurt my foot. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Well, thank you. So that that is our activity. I'm going to jump back over to our tool now, and let's go down to let's go down to um, the group questions here. Um, well, I think we've gone over some of these. When do you think you will be tempted? Okay, um, group question number two. When do you think you will be tempted to use the old habit part? When do you think you will be tempted to use the old habit part? Wednesday. 
Right? (laughs) I think sometimes the old habit part comes up when something catches us off guard or something sudden happens or maybe, yeah, like Mary said, we're pushed into a corner or we're not prepared for something. I think a lot of times when things like that happen, our gut instinct is to go to what we know, right? And what we know, unfortunately, a lot of the time is old habits. And so we have a tendency to jump back or fall back to that that old habit, unfortunately, part of our brain. What did I do before in this situation? You know? What about when we're tired, stressed out? Oh, there you go. That's very true. Because sometimes we just don't have energy. I was going to say when I'm anxious. Yeah. Oh, that's very true. Yeah, when you just don't want to give a crap. Right. We're we're going to be driving to San Diego tomorrow to be with family for two nights, and I always get very uh, anxious and. And my daughter says I have anxiety attacks uh, driving on the damn freeways, excuse me. <laughs> so, Are you on the 405 when you do that? No, I come from San Bernardino Mountains down, so oh, I'm okay. on the 15 and then the 15. Yeah, and, almost as bad. <laughs> That's, yeah. Well, and I, because I, I was born and raised in San Diego, but it was not as crowded as it is now. And I live in a community where we don't even have a stoplight. So oh, wow. uh, then for us to get on the freeway and my husband, who is 77, once I feel like his reactions are not as fast as mine, which could be true and maybe true. So I want to be the driver. And <laughs> okay. I have so much anxiety, but he wants to drive and I need to let him do that. So I'm going to try to work on, he always tells me, just look at Facebook. Yeah, look at Facebook. <laughs> just, look at, just look at Facebook, he tells me while he's driving, but uh, that makes me, that's hard. That's kind of a twofold issue there. Number one, you're anxious because you're on the freeway. You're not used to it. And then number two, you're anxious because you'd rather be driving because exactly. you don't, you're like, you, so you kind of got a whole, you know, twofold thing going on there. Right. And I don't like to get him upset or for Right. I don't trust him. And it's not I don't trust him. I just don't trust the other drivers. But I don't know. That that, yeah. that I love going down to see the kids, grandkids, and great grandkids, but it, I start worrying the morning I get up. Oh, so, that's yeah. That you know, that's that's, that's a that's a bad feeling. <laughs> Too bad so we can't tomorrow, just beam ourselves there, right? We're not even at the Star Trek time yet. Can we just beam there was ourselves? Like a, I wish there was a bullet train or something we could easily get on and take down there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We don't like the Jetsons get in our own personal aircraft, but then that, <laughs> that yeah, might be well, crowded up there in, yeah. in the air, too. <laughs> so I will really try tomorrow to, uh, I'll think about this tonight, and I will really try to take it down a notch. <laughs> well, I'm in San Diego, so I will send you good vibes going oh, the other way. Yeah. Where, do you live? Where are you at in San Diego? Yeah, you should go visit. I'm, I'm, five, I'm five minutes from the prison. I'm about as close to the prison as I could get. Oh, I, I so. grew up in Chula Vista, and I went to Casa Park. Oh, oh wow, well, yeah. Well, I'm in, I'm in Otay Mesa, so oh, okay. I'm just, just north of the 905. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah uh, well, I, yes. I used to tell people, come south, make a U-turn, come back seven miles, and that's where we lived. <laughs> oh, wow. That's crazy, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm down here. I wave at Mexico every night from my balcony. <laughs> oh, yeah, our the one the one daughter we're going to be visiting and granddaughter they live in Alpine. They just bought a home in Alpine, so yeah. Well, I will send you positive vibes. Well, thank you, Tamara. And and our daughter's name is Tamara. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. So let me ask you guys this: When do you think some people use the emotional part when? Why do you think some people use the emotional part when something bad happens? 
Why do you use the emotional part? Yeah, why do you think some people use the emotional part when something bad happens? Because well, I think our emotions are immediate. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Hurt, just, it comes up like like nothing. So. Right. And when you're emotions hurt, are second nature to human beings. Yeah. Right. So, what can you do to use the smart part more often each day? Well, isn't that the million dollar question? You have to concentrate and try to put it foremost, I guess, in our mind. True. Ask yourself, what part of my brain am I using right now? There we go. But you have to be cognizant right. of asking cognizant of asking yourself that which means then in your mind on a daily basis you have to be prepared to stop and ask yourself that which i think is probably one of the most difficult things to do is to be reminded which i think is why it's so important for us to use reminders alarms you know um sticky notes because the more we're reminded to do something, the faster that's going to create, as Coach always says, a new pathway in our brain that goes against the old pathway, you know? So we have to be cognizant of reminding ourselves to use a smart part of our brain, which, well, which can be difficult. Well, if you're reminding yourself to, to say the statement of ownership, yeah. and it becomes habit at these certain times to do the statement, then that should also remind you um, of that certain tool or how you are thinking. You can always ask yourself at the same time, no matter which tool we're using, because this should be the first one, you know, you say the statement of ownership for whichever tool it is, and you can just write, okay, what part of my brain am I thinking, you know, am I using? And if right. we do this at these certain times, I think it becomes more innate when something happens that we think about a statement, you know, and we can go back to the boss of my brain statement of which part am I using? Because we've right. already set our brain on kind of a little pattern of, of reminding ourselves of things. Right. Which is why that goes along with what, what we get the same little statement at the, you know, on every single tool, this little statement about repeating this week's statement of ownership as, on, as often as possible before we get out of bed, before your meals, during a break, and before sleeping. Write this statement for added emphasis. We've talked about that, that the physical act of writing something um, creates um, a connection from our hand to our brain and, and makes something that much, it makes it stronger within our brain because we're actually connecting those two things and it's going to be something that is going to cause us to remember it more so to, to write it um i don't know i don't know if it works for typing it i i try not to write too much because my hands don't want to function like they, i get a pen in my hand and i have to write more than a note and it's like what is going on why can't you type this so i think you know those little things that cause us to remember to do this to repeat the statement of ownership monica's right it gets to a point as the book has brought out that we now do it unconsciously. It's now just our new reaction to things. Um, here's, a, here's an example. I was very emotional yesterday because I have a friend who paroled from Donovan. He's a very clean, he's, he's, he's a childhood friend of somebody, of a friend of mine that's up in Kern. And so I met, I met, I met his wife. I say kid, he's 39. He's not a kid, but to me he is. And I met, I met him after he came out and everything and I keep in touch with him. And unfortunately, since he got out a month, a month, has it been a, more than a month, Mary? Yeah. A month and a half. Yeah. Um, he has been back in County four times. Oh my God. And, oh my you know, and what we, what I ended up finding out yesterday was that, a lot of these, probably three out of four of these were just tic-tac. Like, um, he didn't have a place to sleep, so he went to the park and he was charging his phone. Because um, I looked them all up online to make sure he wasn't, you know, BSing me. 
And and because he just got out and everything, they pick him up. It's like a precautionary. He's on parole. They're going to pick him up. Um, but the first time he got picked, no, actually, there's been two times. The other two, he was he was drinking and public drinking. He knows better than that. But he's also a guy who has had had a raging heroin addiction his whole life, and and was using inside, and served his time out, got out, and he's trying very hard not to use. So what he does is he drinks which is no better, he's still self-medicating. But I'm now keeping, keeping up with him and letting my friend at Kern know how things are going and he's really concerned. He's very concerned, he's afraid he's gonna end up dead or back in prison. And so I'm uh, trying to help this kid but keep a distance and the other night he called me and, I, I, and he basically was telling me to say goodbye to Nico because it was too, uh, it was too hard out there and scared the crud out of me. He sounded horrible. I'm thinking this kid is gonna hang up the phone and he's gonna shoot up and he's gonna kill himself. And I've never been put in that position before. So I'm praying and I'm talking to him for like three hours trying to get him out of his frame of mind. So yesterday I called James. You guys know James. James was on our um, town hall. And James, James, his line of work is, he's a drug counselor and he works for a program. And I called James yesterday, and which was Sunday, and I asked James, I said, James, because this kid's in Moore Park. I said, James, can I, can I come get you? Can we please go to Moore Park? Can we do like a pre-intervention on this? Can we do something? I'm scared he's not going to last the weekend. And James being James and knowing the way people are and everything, he gave me a reality check and basically said, oh, just basically told me there's only so much I can do that if the kid doesn't even want to have, have help, we could go up there and it could be for nothing. James basically told me everything I didn't want to hear. Okay. So basically everything I did not want to hear. And I was, I was sobbing. I was just, I was sobbing and I was angry at him and I was so mad at him that he would not stop what he was doing to help me. And what James did was give me a, def a demonstration of how he, uses the smart part of his brain now. Because the old James probably would have snapped at me because of how I was acting. I wouldn't let him finish his sentence. I, I was being an emotional woman. And James was handled me in such a way that he was calm. I could tell when he was taking a five second light switch. I could tell when he was trying to be calm, he would start to re-talk and say, may I finish please? May I finish please? And so he finally calmed me down to where he could actually finish a sentence. And I called him today and I told him, thank you so much. I know that must have been hard for somebody who was addicted to violence back in the day. So for James to be an example for me of how to use the smart part and be the boss of his brain helped me a lot because if he can do it, then anybody can do it because he used to have a huge problem with it, he said. So he was my good example of, of using the smart part. And fortunately, Andres did not do anything stupid. He did not use, he got rid of the needle. He still drinks, but he's still alive and he's not locked up again. So all I can do is keep hoping that he's gonna be okay. But there's that, that for me was Gogi, living, breathing Gogi in the way James handled that situation. So I wanted to bring that out because I, it must be hard for these guys. And I was an absolute lunatic yesterday <laughs> when I was talking to him. Oh, so but you know helped. what? I think that's another reason that, um, that they should have Gogi meetings out here for guys, you know, and people um, so that, when there is a crisis, you know, like with AA, people have a sponsor or something. Yeah. Someone you can thank God you had him, who he's now level headed because he's gone through it and everything that you could turn to. And, you yeah. know, help, even though it was probably difficult, you know, he diffused the situation for you in your head. And eventually you were able to be calm. And today's a new day. Yeah. And, and so, that was a, that was a, that, an off topic. I don't know if anybody's if anybody's on Ask a Lifer on Facebook, but I, I went in there because there was another situation too where one of our guys that paroled out basically put a post on Facebook that he his post was I'm fighting not to use, 
and this is a guy who's been out for a while. He's just been, he's been doing great. He's been doing awesome. And he puts this, makes this statement and it was scary because he, this was him reaching out. This was him asking for help. And I was angry again. And I think maybe that's why it triggered me yesterday because I was angry because not one person said, where are you? I'm coming to get you. Everybody was, God bless, go with God, you're in my prayers, you're in my prayers. And my feeling is, in situations like that, when these guys have heroin at, and, you know, drug addictions or whatever, and they're saying, I'm, I, I'm, I'm trying not to use, my instinct is to stop what I'm doing, get in my car, go over and physically put that person in my car and take them out of the situation. And so that, you know, we're, we're trying, my whole thing to ask the life is, hey, can we get something? For these guys that get out that we can like deploy throughout the state of California one or two guys when somebody's in need to like you know go get that person like you said like a sponsor and get them out of their mindset so so that they can they won't do maybe what they're doing because that's a downhill spiral into the rabbit hole if right. somebody was to go there you know to get to get that bad because keeping somebody in their prayers isn't sometimes what we need. We need physical action. And uh, I, I, it's one of the, but James also sent me straight on that too, that there are times we need physical action, but sometimes people have to help themselves. Right. Which I don't totally Tomorrow. agree with totally. Tomorrow. And you <laughs> yeah. always, Tamara, and you will yeah. also have to think about that. If you're going to send, you, you have to have a team and you yeah. could go out there, you could, you yourself will set yourself up for failure as well, because if they're going to use, they're going to use. Right. And if you go out there and send somebody that's a lifer or somebody that's been out, I don't care how many years you have under your belt, you put yourself in that position that other person is, that person could persuade you to use as well. So it has to be more than one person going as the back. Right. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Like, it, like, a, like a, at least, you know, two people or something like that. Yes, because you can't put another addict regardless of what their what their addiction is to go try to rescue somebody else because like James said you can't you could give them all the tools you could give them all the help and you could be there and literally beat them <laughs> go into treatment or do something but they're going to do it they're going to do it regardless if you're there or not right yeah and that's the part that I need to probably work on I'm like feel like we need to just save everybody and James may, gave me a quick reality to check on that too. <laughs> you know, the, you know we, we, we can help, but people have to have to save themselves sometimes. And just like Monica and said, we need these groups out here because Monica's, I mean, and the right thing, and, we, and all of you have been saying this because not only do the lifers need it or the people that are paroling, but us as family, oh, wives, yeah. girlfriends, we need it because we need to stop that enabling. Uh -huh, enabling because a lot of it is enabling and we have to check our character defects is why do i want to rescue everybody why do i want right. to because it, it's something in us that needs needs that sometimes right. and well, sometimes we're hurting the person more than we're helping ab absolutely and i think that that is i've always had a feeling that to be a prison wife um or a girlfriend or whatever to to be voluntarily in a situational relationship like this, mm -hmm. it's not norm. It's not norm. It's not the norm. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, the normal person wants to have a relationship where that person is around. They live with them. They're there. So I feel like a lot of us that are in these relationships, in some way or another, we have our own things that are broken. Mm -hmm. we, there's a reason we're mm -hmm. in these relationships, and I don't necessarily mean think that it's, it's always a bad thing, but we've had something happen within our lives that have caused mm -hmm. us to, for whatever reason, latch onto a relationship like this and be okay with it. We're but a lot of it has to do with being enablers and, and, and not maybe not an enabler as much as being codependent. Mm -hmm. And we, a lot of us probably come from codependent parents. And so you're right. We have to check the things that are causing us to be in this relationship. And if it's something that we can fix that's causing our loved one more harm than good, like enabling, then yeah, we, we definitely need to need to look at this. But because this is not the life for everybody. We're no. all broken in one way or another to be in these kind of relationships at some point, you know. Yes. I agree. So I think acknowledging it and then turning that around to where we're now enabling them to be better 
instead mm-hmm. of to be to be worse and knowing well, when to walk away from a relationship right. if you have to as well as ourselves because when we right. do that you know we we continue a bad pattern for ourselves too because believe me my I've had therapy and they bring that stuff up to me but because we look at it as that we love this person and we care about this person and that's what we you know we would want someone to come and help us you know so right. but that thinking you know gets skewed mm-hmm. yes you know? our responsibility starts to get skewed right. is it our responsibility to allow and put up with and or or what is it and so i've tried to liken it to a child i've really had to liken it to a child with with you know my ex is i might love my child but at some point i have to put my child out for the good of the rest of the family or i would have to tell them i love you but i don't support what it is that you're doing and they would have to stumble and find their own way you know and and that's a hard thing to do and just like it would be for are men, but are we hurting them more by allowing it? Yeah, we're hurting them more. We're hurting us. So yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to get so deep in that, but you know, I think you know when we're dealing with these tools, part of being the boss of our brain is having control over our thought patterns with this kind of thing, especially with addiction, because it is a manipulative, horrible addiction that causes our men to be a totally different person, totally different that we don't even know. So, so I appreciated James yesterday giving me that reality check, and, and it, those are things I have to work on. I can't save everybody because if I try to do that, then it becomes very unreasonable on my side, and then I end up getting hurt in the process and, and could cause, you know, harm to somebody else if I'm not allowing them to find their own way. Okay. So. All right. So does anybody want to bring up anything else? I scrolled up there. The one thing I think we need to just remember, and like I said, I'm going to post this, um, is what, what Coach Carlson said up here about having that kind of freedom. So even if we're not in control of where we are physically, I love that point that you can't ever be told what to think while while doing so you can't you're not told you can be told where to stand where to sleep when to eat but nobody can ever control what it is that you think in your own mind while you're doing and it. that is That's so important. even though so you're made to do something you can still think what you want to think while you have to conform to that part of you know prison life right you can still which is why somebody could be screaming at them probably and they got a big old smile on their face because yeah. they're somewhere they're somewhere else in their own mind they're free you know like what is that one little picture where that guy i think it's for what if but it means the same thing where this guy was picturing himself with a diploma in his hand yeah or somebody was picturing themselves at the beach you know so that's that's their freedom right there that's, that's their, so being funny their brain. michael does the same thing when the ceos like get in his face he'll just sit there and laugh at them and turn around and walk away and it pisses them off because they know or they he knows that they don't have him and they know that too and it absolutely drives the ceos crazy because michael's not going to sit there and listen to them bully him he's yeah. going to turn around and walk away and know that i have myself and my wife has me and that's all that i need i don't need these ceos in here like trying to tell me what to do whatever he does what he has to do and he doesn't get in trouble. He doesn't surround himself with the negative. He's always doing his school, doing his programs, like he'll draw for people. And now it's like, he, he doesn't, he doesn't deal with it. And I'm so proud of him for that. And, that, and after a while, time, yeah, after a while, they'll leave him alone because you know what I'm saying? It's no fun picking on somebody that doesn't react. Right. So, you know, after a while they'll, they'll come to, to leave, leave him alone, which is the best thing they could probably do to a lot of these guys is just leave them alone. And before, but like six, seven months ago, eight months ago, even last year, he would have been like, he's not the type to fight, but he would get back in their face uh, and, and go off at the mouth. And now he's like, I just look at them, I get in their face and I, I'm like, ha, 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 and turn around and walk away. Okay, now that probably isn't the best thing for Michael to do. <laughs> <laughs> but it, he's, he's on not, the right track. 
<laughs> he's not, yeah, but he's not like he's not cussing them out like he would have before. And, and, that's and good. even the guys, that's good. Even, that's good. Even the guy, even the guys come up to him and they try to challenge him, and he looks at him, rolls his eyes, and turns around and walks away. Like he's not. They all want to. They all want him to fight. They'll stand in his face and argue with him, and then they'll either back down or Michael will turn around and walk away. That's happened. Well, that's I don't know how many times. Like that's good. I'm so glad. I'm so glad yeah. he hasn't gotten in any fights. Like nothing. He's had people in his face, but he he has not gotten in a fight yet. Thank God. Yeah. No. That's that's good because I'm sure that's that's hard. Yeah. yeah. But he, I want to fight people that, on the other side of the computer, so I can't imagine somebody <laughs> being in my face. So I'm going to tell Michael we are proud of him to, to try to hold the ha, ha, ha and do that in his own mind. Yeah, he said <laughs> he, he, he made a promise to himself when our daughter asked him um, a couple months ago, Daddy, when are you going to be home? And he he made a promise to himself that he wasn't going to get any more extra time. And he, he was going to get as much time as he could shaved off of his sentence so he could good. give her a, a time when he was coming home. Good. That's good. So, That's going to be the smart part of his brain. Yep. I'm more proud of him. I will. He's okay, ladies. So any, any closing comments on Boss of My Brain? Does anybody have anything else they would like to share? Not here. Okay. Let's go ahead and finish this out then. We did our reading. We did our, um, I'm going to skip that. I'm going to, I'm, let's, I think we should, it's good to spend our time since we're all still learning on the activity. Okay. Once we all get like really, you know, go and all that, we can, you know, dwell more on, on doing the activity out here or the action out here. So why don't we go ahead and who wants to um, lead us in our Gogi pledge? This bigger here. I will. Okay, go ahead. Uh, please repeat after me. May our commitment. May our commitment. May our commitment. To the study of Gobi. To the study of Gobi. Grant us the joy. Grant us the joy. Of giving and receiving. Of giving and receiving. So that our inner freedom. So that our inner freedom. So that our inner freedom. May be of maximum service. May be of maximum service. To those we love, those we love, those we love, an infinite others, an infinite others. Thank you. So we invite you to join us for our next meeting to be held, which is going to be next Monday at eight o'clock, where we will study the Gogi tool, belly breathing. Yes, belly breathing. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Is it next Tuesday? Yes. Is it next Tuesday? <laughs> is, it, is it next Tuesday? Okay. All right. So it, and that's on the that's on the current the one I sent out today, right? Yes. Okay. We're not Thank you. A do, we're not having a dual meeting this week. No. Okay. No, this is going to be it since Wednesday is um, the Fourth of July. Oh, all right. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so okay, then that's Tuesday at eight when it will be belly belly breathing. Okay, so let's go ahead and close out with the way we always close out. We'll do a oh, and just just a quick just a quick update, you guys. Um, I'll be posting it. We're still working out the kinks, but um, you know we've been bringing men on into the group, and um, Kevin, not Kevin, James, James Washington. Um, who is who joined? Who is a gogi? Not only is he a gogi leader, but he's also he's also now a certified peer coach. I guess you can actually take a peer coach class 
and become a certified peer coach out here and then apply that certification to whatever program which he's going to be applying that certification to Gogi. So as a certified peer coach, when he's going in and doing self-help for people, the program he will use in doing that is going to be Gogi. He's going to put, uh, utilize the Gogi tools into um, whatever, whatever company he goes to work for. And they're going to, I think he already has one, and they're going to allow him to build a Gogi program based on his, his certification. So he's doing, and this is in Riverside. He's doing all the groundwork and all the legwork for any of us who want to kind of follow that. Like, I want to get to a point where I get to be coach status. And by the time we're done, he's laying it out to where we can actually be certified as a Gogi coach, and it will be recognized as an actual self-help program, not just in a prison, but out here. So as we bring guys like that on, um lauren is going to join you know lauren does those beautiful magical lantern lights but as these guys come on you know coach said hey maybe we either need to change the name of the group or we need to do a separate men's group and i don't i don't want to split us up um i don't want to silo i think we're much better as a big group so we're we're going to go ahead and change the name and we're going to drop the the women part then we're trying to figure out what we're going to have instead um, so you might see, you're going to see that change and, um, and that is going to be coming fairly soon. So don't be surprised, but we'll have a lot more Gogi men, Gogi leaders in the group, which is really going to help us a lot. Um, and I'm excited about that. So. Yeah. Did coach respond to you about any of those other names we threw out there? Yeah. 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 I, I think she got sick of me emailing her because <laughs> at one point she said, um, whatever you guys choose will be perfect. <laughs> so yeah. Basically was figure it out. Okay. <laughs> she's, she's fine with whatever it is that we choose. Okay. Um, yeah. So we'll be fine. Um, okay, so that's, you know, that's exciting news. So Gogi out in the community is becoming a serious, that's reality. It's a reality that's happening. And there's other awesome stuff happening. And once I get more detail, I can share it, but it's going in a really good direction. Um, okay. All right. So thank you everybody for attending. Let's do our one, two, three Gogi for life. And um, we'll go ahead and convene. So one, two, three, Gogi for life. Yeah, okay, Mary put her fist up, but she had food in her gob, so she might go to your life. Okay, thank you, ladies. Thank you so much. You have a great evening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.